Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Debadwa and I work at Roche, a pharmaceutical company. I work in our early clinical research and development organisation where I am a team leader and portfolio manager. Hi, my name is Anna and I work at Roche. At Roche, thousands of different people work together from all over the world to create innovative medicines that help millions of people globally. We don't stop at making medicines. We also work hard to produce diagnostic tests so doctors are in a stronger position to help patients. Today, I'm here to guide you through some of the steps taken to develop our medicines. What needs to be done safely to get these drugs from our laboratories to patients in need? Who is involved and how does this link to what you are learning at school? Let's start by considering some of the defence mechanisms our bodies already have. Thinking of these can be a really good springboard for creating new medicines. We can base our ideas for new drugs on what nature has already started. Can you spot some of the defence mechanisms in the pictures? Even better, are you able to come up with any other ways our bodies stop infection from entering? Jot down your ideas. Here's some time for you to think. Okay, so let's see how you did. So picture one is our skin. It secretes hormones which fight pathogens. Pathogens are harmful organisms we don't want in our bodies. You can't see these hormones. They're actually like invisible weapons, which is pretty cool, right? Next, we have our hair. Did you know those tiny nose hairs we all have trap pathogens and stop them from entering our bodies? How do we get rid of them? They're eliminated by a snot. I'm sure most of you got the next one. It's earwax. This essential sticky stuff stops pathogens from infecting our ears. And the last one is actually tears. The tears contain an enzyme that breaks down the cell wall of pathogens, which again is pretty cool. Did you come up with any others? Some others could be sweat mucus and saliva. These are all called our first line of defence and they make it tougher for unwanted pathogens to enter our bodies. Do our natural defence mechanisms work 100% of the time? Of course not, that's why we get ill. Sometimes our natural defence mechanisms aren't strong enough and pathogens do enter the body. So how has this happened? Any ideas? Here's some time to think. Did you come up with any of these? Let's consider them in a bit more detail. Infection can be spread from direct contact. In simple terms, not washing our hands. This increases the likelihood of pathogens moving from one person to the next. Dirty water is one of the biggest transmitters of pathogens. Sometimes there's unfortunately no alternative. Vectors might be one you've not heard of. This is when another organism spreads the disease from person to person. For example, a mosquito spreading malaria. Undercooked or poorly reheated food can lead to a rise in pathogens which we ingest. 
Finally, acts like sneezing and coughing can transmit pathogens through the air. That's why it's so important to catch a sneeze or cough in a tissue and then throw it away. Let's see how quickly disease can spread. In this activity, most of you will be labelled the colour green, symbolising healthy, uninfected people. So on a piece of paper, jot down the colour green. However, one person will be labelled red, symbolising a person carrying a pathogen. Your teacher will let you know if you are the lucky chosen red person, so don't tell anyone. Pause the video now to go get your paper and colours sorted. Remember, remember, all but one of you are green. Shortly, you will walk around the room and I will call out transmission. At that point, you will share your colour with the person nearest to you. Now, you will become the colour that is shared with you. So if you are green, but have been shared red, you now need to cross out green and write red. If you are green and have been shared green, you don't need to do anything. And if you are red, you will remain red whatever colour you now receive. If you're working remotely, you can play the game too using the chat function. Just follow the instructions on the right side of the screen. Okay, are you ready? You can walk around the room. Transmission. You should all be sharing your colour with one person. Go. Okay, you should now all know your new colours. Remember, if you are red, you stay red, even if you receive a message saying green. Ready? Transmission. Now share your current colour with one person. Okay, I'm going to go again. Transmission. And let's now do one final one. Transmission. Okay, you should now all have your final colours. Time to see how quickly infection spreads. If you are now red, please raise your hand. Infection has risen from one person to this number in just four transmissions. The message, infection spreads quickly. What does this experiment show us? Take a moment to consider these questions. In this experiment, transmission was happening through a vector. Remember, that's when something else spreads the disease, in this case, the chat function. We were transmitting a colour in this experiment. The colour was representing the pathogen. You may have worked out that the speed of transmission increases. The more people there are infected, the higher the transmission rate. You've now demonstrated exactly what scientists at Roche do every day. Some people work in bioinformatics, developing models to check how infection spreads in the real world and eventually forming a drug to combat that disease. That's a lot of information. So it's time to see what you've picked up so far. You can click the link to complete the crossword online or jot down your answers on a piece of paper. Pause the video now and give yourself some time to complete. How did you do? Pause the video to check your answers.
So there you have it, a clear idea on how our bodies defend against disease and how infection spreads. Importantly, we can see how modelling is used to help us predict what will happen. This puts us in a strong position to develop drugs to combat disease. So what happens once we've developed a drug in the lab? How do we get it to our patients? Before we can, there is one crucial step. Any ideas what this is? It's clinical trials. You may have heard of these. That's it from us at Roche. We hope this has helped you to see how your learning at school feeds into the work we do. Budding scientists like you are essential to continue the work we're doing. Thank you.